Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. This video is going to be a little bit unusual because I'm not going to make a traditional review or traditional testing. Instead, this is going to be some sort of a build log, how I happened to build this X99 mini computer, which is about 8-9 liters in size, how I had to cut these ventilation holes in this chassis, how I managed to cool down EFI 2667 V4 and NVIDIA RTX 4060 low profile. Let's start the first episode with going through all the components I have picked up for this mini computer with the X99 base. Everything starts with this Chiyida X99 Q4 motherboard, which is basically a copy of Huanaji X99 QT4. I have done basic tests of the motherboard and so far it works exactly just like QT4. It is also compatible with the same BIOS. And what's good about it is that we have two M.2 slots, we have a slot for Wi-Fi card, and then we have additional PCI Express X4 if I would want to install an expansion card. And of course, it has quad-channel memory configuration compared to Machinist X99 PR9 that has only two memory channels. So then for the motherboard, I have here EFI 2667v4 that I will attempt to cool down in this tiny chassis. We also have a graphics card and this graphics card is RTX 4060 low profile. So I will go and quickly open it. So here is this tiny little beauty with these tiny three fans. And even though it is very small, it is kind of heavy for its size and it still requires 8-pin power connector. So 8-pin power connector was another problem that I had to solve with this tiny computer to find a power supply that has an 8-pin. And this graphics card has four DisplayPort outputs even though it is a low-profile graphics card. So I'm not sure how good it will be at staying within operational temperatures in that tiny chassis, but I hope it will be just fine. Uh, so, for the chassis, I have got this PHPWM controlled Arctic fan that is supposed to be here. We can install an 80 millimeter fan, and this one will go in here. And obviously, with the Chinese motherboard, we can only control speed of PWM fans, so I had to buy this one. I have a couple of Noctua fans which could go in there, but they are only 3-pin fans. And I have also got a couple of slim fans, which I hope I will be able to install either here or here after I um, drill some holes in this uh, top side, because without extra fans the ventilation here will be absolutely horrendous and uh, uh, if I 2667v4 with RTX 4060 will of course overheat. Now, for the RAM, I have got four sticks, eight gigabyte each. Let's take a look what it is. I just picked it from the secondhand market for really cheap. And it's a eight gigs, say, one or eight PC for 2400. So this is good. This memory would not require overclocking to work at DDR4 2400. And of course, if I 2667 V4 can work stock at DDR4 2400. Okay, so this power supply is also from Intertech and it is Argus. In the past I had a couple of Argus power supplies and they were completely horrible, so I didn't even use them in my builds, but this time I decided to give it a try. The power supply is only 350 watts, but that shall be just enough for EFI 2667 V4 and RTX 4060. So over here we have manual, which is probably no one needs. Then we have a power cord, pretty standard, and the power supply itself. Uh, so the power supply comes with this paper bag. I guess they are trying to mimic to be environmentally friendly, but I don't know, it just feels tacky. So taking out it from the paper bag, the power supply feels rather heavy and let's start with looking or inspecting what kind of connectors we have in here. So for the connectors, I hope I did not read the description one and I have got everything I need. So 24 pin for the motherboard, of course, 
And then uh, here is what I looked for, the 8-pin power connector for the graphics card, which is awesome. And then we have the 8-pin or 4 plus 4 for the CPU power. And additionally, here is a couple for uh, SATA drives. It's actually three for SATA drives, one Molex, another Molex, and one floppy ones. I wish this could be removable, but uh, they are not. And the good is that they don't take too much space, so I will just zip tie it somewhere. Now let's take a look at the specification of the power supply. So here we have a switch and the specification says that we have here two 12 volt rails, 13 amperes each. It means that maximum 156 watt load on each of the rails. And this shall be enough. One rail will go for the graphics card and another rail for the CPU. So this CPU, this is graphics card. And 156 uh, watt shall be enough for EFI 2667 before and the RTX 4060. So that's my hope and my goal that this power supply will not disappoint me. If this fan is going to be too noisy, I will have to do something and replace it but only testing will tell. It's been a while since I got all my boxes, but now I have got a moment to actually start the assembly. This time it's a bright shiny day outside, so hopefully the lighting will be a bit better. Okay, the fan is installed, so now I can try to install the motherboard into the chassis and see what kind of a CPU cooler I can fit in here. And I'm also having concerns about these motherboard stands. I hope they will match with this Chinese X99 Cheetah motherboard, because otherwise I will have to take out a drill and figure out what to do with the ones that do not match. Okay, so for the SSD I found something cheapest on Amazon and it happens to be this EMTAC X300. It's a PCI Express SSD and uh, under normal circumstances I would install it into the first M.2 slot. But since we are building a mini computer and the airflow is very restricted, I prefer the SSD to be in the second slot to be further from the graphics card and not right under the graphics card. So hopefully I will get a better cooling of this SSD. Finally, the motherboard is off my test bench. I have memory installed, I have SSD installed, and I have got the IO shield so I can proceed installing this piece into this tiny chassis. So, what have we got from the holes? We have two here, two stands here one stand uh, let me see so so far everything seems to be matching except that we don't have a stand for this one let me see maybe we have a spare stand in here no it doesn't seem like that but maybe it's this one what is this? Yeah, I think this is a small... Exactly. So this one you can just glue at the back side of the motherboard where the stand is supposed to be because we don't have place for this stand. And it's gonna do it. I actually like this solution because it does not hold the motherboard to the chassis and it's easier to install it and remove it.
Now it's in and looks pretty good I would say. And the CPU cooler fits so I have a hope that maybe I can install even a bigger cooler here because there is still some space left here. Here is my sketchy Intertech Argus TFX 350 82 plus power supply so let's get it installed. Okay, the power supply here has three mounting points. Let's see which screws are gonna fit in here. I guess it's uh, these big ones. Big ones. Nice, the power supply is in. And now it's time for some horrible cable management. Okay, so now everything is in, everything is connected, it's absolute mess with cables, which I will figure out how to solve later on. But for now we have audio connected, USB 2 connected, USB 3 connected, front panel buttons connected, fan connected, CPU fan installed and connected, and of course the CPU power and um, the motherboard power connected. The only thing left is the graphics card, so let me install that and then we can try to start this computer. And of course I made a mistake of not removing these uh, planks or placeholders before installing the motherboard. For some stupid reason I assume that they are removable, but they are not, so I need to be very careful not to scratch the motherboard while I am removing them. But it seems like they are short enough so they can be easily removed even if the motherboard is installed. Okay, so the graphics card comes with a standard bracket pre-installed. That means that I need to find where is the low profile bracket. Here is the low profile bracket and install it. So here it is, the standard bracket is off, the low profile bracket is on, let's get it installed. So now this looks even better. The only thing left is the power for the graphics card. And here we have this 8-pin power connector, which I really needed from this power supply. Now it's in. So it's time to try to start this computer. But first I want to make sure that this cable is not going into the graphics card. Let's hope this power supply is not gonna blow up on me. Time to press the power button. Let's hope I get the output on the monitor. Come on, please boot. Yes, yes, it boots. Of course, we don't have any boot media because I have installed a fresh and new SSD, but I will go into the BIOS settings, 
just to see if uh, the memory is detected correctly and if it's running at DDR4-2400. Okay, so we have 32 gigs of RAM, which is correct. And then I can go into the memory. Where do I have memory here? And then we have memory topology. Yes, we have here, you can see it's channel 0, 1, 2, 3. So we have quad channel configuration, DDR4-2400, which is awesome. And then of course I can also configure uh, memory timings over here if I would want to, but that's I'm gonna do later. So finally I have my cable mess somehow sorted out, the CPU cooler is in place and here I have a tiny exhaust fan, but of course with this solid top or side panel this CPU cooler will just choke and it will not cool anything. So I have an idea that I will somehow drill a hole over here and then I can use this net from this old silver stone fan to cover up the hole so there will be direct airflow into the CPU cooler and then outside from the chassis. To achieve the goal I bought this saw and this one's supposed to be mounted onto a drill with this mounting mechanism so hopefully that's gonna work for me. I'm not sure, I will try because this one was specified that it is only able to cut through aluminum, light iron and wood. So I hope this one is not some casted steel, so it shall be possible to cut through. And then I also got myself this set of sanding paper and polishing materials to make the edges somehow nice. So hopefully it will work out, but we will see how it goes. Okay, as expected, one hole in this side panel was not enough to keep the computer cool. I mean, the CPU is staying cool under 70 degrees Celsius in Cinebench R23, so everything is good. But the graphics card is choking, so I had to cut another hole. And unlike the first hole, the second hole was completely horrendous. And that's all because my whole saw just, uh, well, 
it doesn't work anymore. So let me flip the camera and show you all the mess I have here. So this is the whole saw which I supposed to use to cut the hole and unfortunately after the first hole it became super dull so it does not cut well anymore and well I had to resort to all sorts of solutions including this fluffy cat to get my hole complete. So first I used this kind of dremel to finally cut it off and then I had to waste a couple of such files to make it somehow unsharp and somehow presentable. And then I tried to polish it with this kind of a polish brush or whatever it is called. And now it is somehow presentable. Here is my box where I have done everything. It's complete mess over there, but at least I managed to save my floor from all sorts of debris and so on. Look at this mess. So the first hole is very accurate, looking nice. And here comes the second one. You can see that on one side it is perfectly fine. That's where the saw managed to cut it through. And my cat, of course, wants to go into their debris. Get out of here. So, you can see here, it's where I have to struggle through. And it did not look even as good as this. It was horrible. Now it's somehow presentable. And on the other side, it also looks kind of okay, but I still plan to buy some extra files and try to make it look even nicer. Anyway, what's good about it is that my 3D printer arrived, and that means that I don't need to figure out what fan grill to install on these holes. Instead, I can try to design a 3D printable grid, which will cover both of these holes, and it's gonna look kind of nice. Well, that's in theory how it's gonna go in practice. I don't know and I still need to assemble the 3D printer and figure out where to place it. So this X99 mini computer project is uh, going much longer than I expected. Well, but at least now I have one and second hole. So hopefully the graphics card is not gonna overheat and I can finally start doing some gaming tests Maybe I can even play some Skull and Bones beta, which is right now available. Since I'm recording this video, you probably have guessed it that the computer is kind of ready, it works, and I can run my benchmarks as well as play games. But if you're interested to see the tailored test results of Xeon EFI 2667v4, then I suggest you to check out some of my other videos where the CPU is tested with RX 7900 XT graphics card. Here I'm going to focus on how this particular machine performs and if we talk about the CPU there is not much to add. The CPU is surprisingly easy to cool and with my solution with cutout hole with VQuiet CPU cooler EFI 2667v4 stays under 70 degrees Celsius under Cinebench R23 stress test. The scores are also very much as expected, about 885 points with one CPU core and about 8750 points with all CPU cores used. At the same time, the power consumption of the system is about 7457 watts, so this is when all or one CPU core used under Cinebench R23 test. For games, I'm going to test 1080p screen resolution and of course all the latest drivers as well as all Windows updates were installed. I have also enabled resizable bar, even though for Nvidia it doesn't play that much of a difference. And in every game where Nvidia Low Latency Reflect feature is available, it was enabled. Let's start with Assassin's Creed Mirage. Even though it's not the most popular game, it is a CPU and GPU depending, so it's a good thing to test. Here I am testing medium preset, but the adaptive quality was disabled, so the game does not adjust its quality for the performance. I have got 1930 FPS, minimum and averages. And during the benchmark run, this computer consumes about 235 watts, which is way below the capability of the power supply. It can deliver about 350 watts. The next game is F123. Here I test high preset, which does not enable ray tracing by default. And so we get very good results, 165, 183 FPS, minimum and on average. 
The power consumption in this game stays at about 222 watts, which is slightly less compared to Assassin's Creed Mirage and significantly less than the maximum capability of the power supply. Another Ubisoft game I have tested is Skull and Bones, but the game is still in beta, so after the final release the performance might be different. Here I test high preset, but I have disabled upscaling, because at 1080p with the upscaling it looks pretty bad. The results are not fantastic, but also not too bad. Using the in-game benchmark we get 41 FPS minimum and 91 FPS on average. And this is pretty much what I get when I actually go into the game and try to play it. About 90 FPS on average with high preset. And I believe it is not a bad result. Now let's test some first-person shooters, starting with Counter-Strike 2. Here I test low preset, but FSR was manually disabled. On average, after 3 games 10 minutes each, I have got about 8875 FPS. Even though Counter-Strike has tiny maps and does not have any distractions, it is very CPU demanding, and we can see that RTX 4060 utilization stays below 50%. So Xeon EFI 2667 V4 is the bottleneck here, and the bottleneck is kinda big. The finals is another shooter that I have tested. Unlike CS2, they have much bigger maps and destruction all over the place. Nevertheless, with high preset and no upscaling, we have respectable 7015 FPS, minimum and on average. If I reduce the graphical quality to medium, the FPS numbers are slightly better, 75 and 135 FPS. As you can see, RTX 4060 stays under 80% utilization, so Xeon EFI 2667 V4 is yet again the bottleneck in this game. If you would want more FPS, you would need a better gaming CPU. The last game I have tested for this project is Fortnite. Here I test DirectX 12 API with a low graphical preset. Unlike previous two games, in Fortnite we have much better results. Here I have got 110 FPS minimum and 190 FPS on average. And even though sometimes, occasionally, I would get some FPS drops, the overall gameplay is very smooth and enjoyable. Okay, after so many days of struggles building this X99 mini gaming computer, I did not feel like running more benchmarks. Still, I have a few words about the power consumption. As I have already mentioned under gaming conditions, this PC consumes up to 250 watts, but in general it stays about 220-230 watts. Now, under idle conditions, the PC consumes about 45-50 watts, which is not too bad. And the Cinebench stress test, when all CPU cores are utilized, the power consumption is about 157-160 watts. And when I run stress test on both CPU and GPU, the power consumption goes up to 280-290 watts, which is still below the maximum capacity of the power supply. It is able to deliver about 350 watts. Another important aspect to cover is the noise, and unfortunately in this mini computer the noisiest is the power supply. And that means that if you would want to make it silent, you would have to open up the power supply and replace the fan. Still, even though the computer is audible and you can hear it, I was not bothered with it during testing or during gaming. Yes, you can hear it, and yes, some sensitive people will find it completely intolerable, but in my case, for me, I find it totally okay, and especially if I put the computer under the table and wear a headset, I could not hear it at all. I have recorded a few audio samples of computer running at idle and at full load, so you can listen how it sounds, but keep in mind that without proper measurement of the noise level, these kind of sound clips might be misleading, because the audio is first transformed through my microphone and then through your speakers, and the picture might be completely screwed for you. Now let's talk about the interesting part, the price of this build. Please keep in mind that I have bought many parts in EU and I specify the prices in Sweden, which include 25% VAT compared to the AliExpress price. So let's start with the Xeon EFI 2667 V4. For it I paid 50 euros. Cheetah X99 QD4 motherboard clone 
costed me 63 euros. Then I have picked up four sticks, 8 gigabyte each, DDR4 2400 ECC registered memory on local secondhand market, and for that I paid just about 20 euros. Finally, the Gigabyte RTX 4060 low profile graphics card costed me whopping 350 euros, which is kinda a lot. For the SSD 1TB drive, I have paid about 54 euros. Then the case, it is Intertech S331, costed me 38 euros. The power supply Intertech TFX 350W costed me 46 euros. The Be Quiet Shadow Rock low profile CPU cooler costed me 50 euros. And the fans, 8mm Arctic Freezer fan, which is installed at the front, and a 40mm Noctua fan installed at the back, together costed me about 25 euros. So, all in all, the total final price of this PC build ended up to be 695 euros. And I did not count extra 60-70 euros that I have spent on tools to be able to cut out uh, these ventilation holes. Unfortunately or fortunately, I do not have a personal use for this computer, so if you're in Europe and you're interested to buy it, please leave me a comment or connect with me in Discord. Maybe we can arrange something and maybe we can agree on some sort of a price deal. I also have a few final notes about this X99 mini computer. And the first one is that I forgot how annoying NVIDIA GPUs are. I am testing with RX 7900 XT, in my personal computer I have 7900 XTX, and lately many of my customers prefer AMD GPU over NVIDIA. Unfortunately, I could not find any decent low-profile AMD GPU, so I had to go with 4060. And when I test, I need to connect two monitors. One is my gaming 4K 144Hz monitor for actually running some games, and the second one is Elgato 4K video capture card. Then I have to mirror video output to both the monitor and capture card so I can play and record at the same time. And in this configuration, NVIDIA 4060 behaves just terrible. Very often I'm getting black screen on my monitor because it does not wake up the monitor. Sometimes the monitor wakes up, but I still get black screen. And this could happen when I go into the game, so I switch from desktop mode to full screen mode. It could happen when I switch from one screen resolution to another screen resolution or it could happen when I am simply booting into the system. It is very frustrating, it is very annoying, and I don't understand why NVIDIA cannot sort out these multi-monitor solutions and make sure that the graphics card wakes up the monitor when it's needed. Another note is that I'm still concerned about cooling of 4060 inside this chassis. Right now it is winter outside and I have rather low ambient temperatures, sometimes I keep my temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius, so cooling of the PC is not that hard, but in the summer when ambient temperatures might be 22, 24 or even 25 degrees Celsius, the GPU will most likely overheat. So to solve this problem, I most likely would have to install an exhaust fan on this hole, so the hot air from the GPU is sucked out from it and not trapped inside the chassis, but another possible solution would be to replace the 4060 with a low-profile 3050. The 3050 seems to be like a better match to e 2667 v4 overall, but the price tag of almost 250 euros and only 6 gigabytes of video memory makes it impossible for me to recommend this graphics card. 4060 costs just a bit more and it has 8 gigs of memory, so it is what it is, I don't know. The final note will be about Chiyida X99Q4 motherboard, which is a clone of Quanangi X99QD4. Overall, the motherboard performed really well and I do not have any major complaints. Still, I'm annoyed at the long booting time, I'm annoyed at the beeping speaker that beeps in some random tones during the boot time, and I also lack fan connectors. As any other Chinese X79 X99 motherboard, this Q4 motherboard also cannot control speed of 3-pin fans. When building a budget or semi-budget computer, you would want to save as much money as possible, and 4-pin fans are usually more expensive than the 3-pin fans, so it's pretty annoying. And in my case, I had to connect three fans and maybe one more fan, while the motherboard has only two fan headers, 
So yeah, not the ideal situation. I have tried to record this final section of the video multiple times and I failed, and that's because I cannot make my mind about this mini X99 gaming computer. On one side I love it, on the other side I don't like it. So I love the idea of a mini computer that does not take too much space, I love the idea of a reusing X99 motherboards and Xeons, and I love the low-profile RTX 4060. At the same time, this chassis is just horrible. The ventilation simply does not exist. It's like a sealed box. The one who designed this chassis shall be just fired from their job because they don't understand how the PC chassis is supposed to work. It was a real struggle to make these cutouts to keep my 4060 and EFI 2667 V4 under operational temperatures. It is also very expensive to find somehow decent TFX power supplies, and most of them have very low wattage and very noisy fans. Low-profile CPU coolers for the LJ2011 socket are also expensive, so that's also a downside. And overall, the savings from, uh, let's say, going with i3-12100 or Ryzen 5 5600, if I count everything in, are not that great. So, I'm very torn about it. I don't know. As I said, I love it, but I don't like it. Nevertheless, if this video is going to be popular and you're interested in such build logs, I plan to build another mini ITX gaming computer, but this time going the traditional proper way with Ryzen 5 5600, so then we can have two computers side by side and compare how much money we can save, how much extra performance we can get, and how less of a struggle it will be building a mini ITX gaming computer using the traditional components. I am still going to stick with the 4060 graphics card so we can have uh, apples to apples comparison in games, but other than that, I don't have much extra to say. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, and bye for now.